Welcome to Living Seeds Farm and welcome to our Growing Potatoes talk. And this is a, a, a really appropriate talk for this time of the year because if you plant potatoes now, you are going to be harvesting potatoes going into winter. And the cool thing is, the best place to store potatoes over winter is in the soil. Okay, but we'll talk about that now. So, who buys potatoes from the shops on a regular basis? Put your hands up. Who complains at the price of the potatoes? It, it's mull. Hey? It's absolutely mull. And when you take the potato home and you boil the potato up and you turn it into mash, it is probably the most horrendous mash that you've eaten. Am I right? No taste. Got no taste. Okay. And it's a case of the farmers are not growing for what you like. The farmers are growing because they are paid by the kilo. And the two top varieties in South Africa are Mondial and Sifra. Mondial probably makes the worst mash ever that you can eat. It is absolutely disgusting. My kids refuse to eat mondial. If we have a, a point where we have to buy potatoes at the shop, and we go into the shop, we go and look, and we look for the variety in the bag. Who knows how to find the variety in the bag? Does anybody know how to find the variety in the bag, except for Josh? <coughs> hey? You focus on the label. Where's the label? On the bag. Where on the bag? Somewhere. Somewhere on the bag. Okay. So if you go to Woolies and the, um, and the pick and pay pre-packs, there's normally a sticker telling you what variety it is. Okay. If you're buying those brown paper pockets, the variety is at the bottom of the pocket. So you've got to turn the pocket upside down and you'll see the variety on the bottom. My advice is, if it says Mondial, put it back. Okay, they are my kids refuse to eat Mondials. You can, you can go, to, so Jenna's over there, those of you that have talked about the chickens, walk up to her and say, what's the worst potato variety? I'll put money on it that she'll say Mondial. <laughs> Same with my wife and any of the other kids, any of my other kids. So, we like to, to, to eat potatoes like Tyson, Valor, um, up-to-date, BP1s. They're really nice potatoes, and the cool thing is you can grow potatoes for specific purposes. There are great chipping potatoes. There are great roasting potatoes. There are great all-purpose potatoes. There are great mashed potatoes. There are great salad potatoes, potato salads. Um, but it's a case of generally what happens is you don't know. The wife says to the husband, go to pick and pay and buy potatoes. The husband goes to pick and pay, goes and puts potatoes. He doesn't even look at the potatoes. And then the wife comes and, ah, you bought glassy potatoes. Why did you buy these glassy potatoes? Can't you know, don't you know how to choose potatoes? It's always the husband's fault. <laughs> Sounds like I'm an abused husband. No, I'm not. Okay, so potatoes are generally a cool season crop. They're not a cold season crop. They're not a winter crop. They're a cool season crop. Potatoes like cool soil. And those of you... So, um, let's, uh, okay, before we talk about growing potatoes, what's the difference between planting a potato that you buy in the store that's sprouting like this and buying a potato that has a certified label on it? What's the difference? Disease. Disease. Anybody else? Okay, that's the biggest thing. Diseased potatoes are allowed to be sold for human consumption. You didn't know that, hey? Do you think it's a scary thing? It's not really. The potato diseases don't affect people, okay? But potato diseases can be, transplanted, can be transmitted from the farmer's farm into your soil. And if you have a soil-borne disease, you cannot plant a solanaceous vegetable for five years. Tomatoes, peppers, brinjals, gooseberries, potatoes, any of that family, any of the nightshade family, can't be planted in that soil because the disease will probably be transmitted into that crop. And some of the diseases like the viruses 
can be seed transmitted. So if you harvest a tomato, save the seed, and plant the seed, you are now transmitting from the potato to your soil, from your, from your new potatoes to your tomato plants, from your tomato plants to your tomato seed, and you plant them in new soil the following year, and you've transmitted the virus. And that is the biggest problem. So, realistically, what are the chances of putting a disease into your soil? Very high. Very high. Okay. I estimate that it's probably around 10%. Okay, between 10 and 20 percent, you have a between 10 and 20 percent chance of, 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 of transmitting a disease from the potato that you bought in the store into your soil, which is pretty low. So let's go with the 10 percent. You've got a one in nine chance. Who's been planting store-bought potatoes for five years? Anybody? Oh, I'm so glad to see. Well done, guys. Okay, so it's a case of you will eventually pick up a disease inside your soil. It's going to happen. Certified seed potatoes have a less than 1% chance, depending on, and I'll talk about the G, uh, the G ratings now, but there's a less than 1% chance of transmitting a, a disease. Generally, there's less than half a percent chance of transmitting a disease in inside your soil. And how they make seed potatoes, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very technical process. So what they do, who knows what an, what an apical cap is on a plant? Anybody did biology, you know what an apical cap is. Well done. It's the growth tip on a plant. It's the very tip, it's the very growth tip on a plant. They're microscopic. So what they do is under a microscope, they harvest a whole lot of apical caps off a tomato plant. They take those apical caps, they put them into a special little blender, they blend it up, and they spread them over an agar solution. They take that agar solution, they put them into a, into a special incubator, and those apical caps grow into new plants. And now you have thousands of microscopic potato plants in this little glass petri dish. They take those potato plants and they will grow them out into mini plants which get transplanted into a sealed climate controlled tunnel. And you've got to put special suits on to get into the tunnel and disinfection and the whole biosecurity story. They will grow those into mini tubers, and the mini tubers are tiny little mini tubers like this. They take the mini tubers, they plant the mini tubers into new tunnels, and these tunnels are hectares worth of tunnels. It's not a little 300 square meter tunnel like that, okay? It's hectares of tunnels. They take the mini tubers, they grow the mini tubers into what's called G1, Generation 1 potatoes. And we sell on Living Seeds Farm, we sell uh, G3 and G4 potatoes, G3 and G4 certified potatoes. It goes all the way up to G8. Most farmers will not plant G5 unless they're really desperate for seed. G5, G6, G7, G8 all get sent to the market. Okay, and it used to be generation. It, it used to be a generational thing, so you knew that a G4 potato was a four-year-old potato. Now they've changed. The generational thing, and now it's a viral load, okay, or a disease, or a disease load. So the higher the disease load, the higher the G ratio or, or the G certification on the potatoes. So that's why you're paying the money for certified seed potatoes, okay. And it's it, it's not a guarantee of disease free, but it's a it's a very good chance of not transmitting a, a, a potato a, a potato disease into your into your soil. The next thing is you have seed potatoes. These are seed potatoes and you have true potato seed. Does anybody know what the difference is? Where do you get true potato seed from? The flowers, correct, absolutely. Those, the, who's seen the little green tomatoes on a, on a potato plant? You can't eat them because they're very poisonous, am I right? Okay, they're not very poisonous. They are toxic, but you need to eat a fair amount of them, and they taste disgusting. So the chances of you eating a lot of them, or enough of them to, to make you um, very ill, it's, you have to work at it. Really, You really have to work at it. Um, true potato seed will not produce true to type, whereas seed potatoes are all clones of the original potatoes. True potato seed, if you plant true potato seed, you will get potatoes. 
It might take you a little bit more than a year to get your, your potatoes, but if you plant 50 true potato seeds, you're going to get 50 different kinds of potatoes. Cool. And they won't all be the same. The next thing is, those of you that have grown homegrown potatoes, especially if you've grown organic homegrown potatoes, they taste completely different to store-bought potatoes. And why is that? Does anybody know? There's no chemicals added to them. Yeah, but I wash the potatoes and I peel them. Who knows what a systemic poison is? Anybody else know what a systemic poison is? A systemic poison is a poison that is taken up f by the roots of the plant. It goes into the actual plant. So you are eating a tomato or a potato or any fruit or vegetable that's been that's been treated with a systemic poison. The poison is in the flesh that you are eating. You can't wash it out. Those of you here with grandchildren, because I'm not going to ask the parents, what's the right amount of poison to give to your, your grandchild? <laughs> what's the right amount of poison? None. But you're feeding them produce from the stores that have been treated with systemic poisons that you cannot get rid of. Okay, the reason why homegrown produce tastes better, and especially organically grown produce, who's eaten the salads that, we, that we're selling today? What do those salads taste like? Hey? They don't taste like normal salads. The entire salad came off this farm. The only thing that didn't come off this farm was the knife and fork and the, and the buckies. Okay, but otherwise the entire salad came off this farm. And that is a nutrient-dense salad. It tastes com the lettuce tastes completely different. Uh, there was no tomato in that salad. But did you notice there was no tomato? It didn't make a difference. The t because the salad tasted nice. And it's because, the, um, in the case of potatoes, the potatoes are grown in nutrient-dense soil. And the potatoes take the nutrient-dense soil... And they incorporate it in the actual potato that you're eating. A potato is a storage organ. It's either going to store health or it's going to store poisons. And that is the difference between um, a homegrown potato and a chemically tainted potato. You can taste the difference. And it's more nutritionally dense as well. Cool. So let's talk about planting methods. How many of you have seen the YouTube potato planting video? Hey? Was it, was it interesting? Hey? Did you guys learn a couple of things? How many of you now understand why your potatoes don't grow in tires? <laughs> Who, how many people, so I asked this question yesterday and not a single person put their hand up. Who has had wonderful success growing potatoes in tires? I've never tried it. So, so who's grown in tires? Who's had wonderful success growing in tires? There you go. Okay, and it's a case of you go onto TikTok and you go onto Facebook and you check these pictures and you've got this, this bucket and there's just potatoes cascading out of this bucket. And you go, wow, check at that. It's unbelievable. I want to grow potatoes like that. Let me click the video and watch the video. Okay, so we did the experiment last year. I lost the video. We redid it again this year. And for those of you that haven't watched the video, we grew potatoes, we've been growing potatoes, and we've had a number of people growing potatoes in black tires over the years. And there's just never success. And we've always thought that we were doing something wrong, okay? And um, I know that potatoes don't like warm soil. It's one of the biggest killers of production in a potato is warm soil. So I thought black, black tires, if we paint them white, they're going to be better. Because the, the tires aren't getting hot. So we did black tires. Our worst was 10 grams. Now, we're planting. I know how to grow potatoes, I promise you. We were planting two seed potatoes like this. Okay, so two 60-odd gram seed potatoes. We planted 120 grams of, of, of potatoes into a black tire. We harvested 10. This booting, uh, this, ek boer achter eit nie daar, 
So uh, we had a 100 and, 110 gram loss in our harvest. Okay. Our best was 675 grams. So we planted 120, we got 675 grams. Okay, that's still not good. The white tires, our worst was 145 grams. So we made 25 grams of potatoes. Okay. Um, and the best was 875. So there is a slight improvement from black tires to white tires. The next one we planted in bags. And we've all seen you plant your potatoes in a bag and it grows easier and you fill it up. Our worst was 85 grams. Our best was 820 grams. So not quite as good as the white tires. Then we planted in buckets, the TikTok famous one. Okay, We planted in buckets. So what we found with the buckets that the water stayed more moist because the bucket didn't allow evaporation. Um, and we got the most rotten potatoes inside the buckets. Our worst on the buckets was 280 grams. Our best was 530 grams. Then we did wire baskets. So the wire baskets was, a, it was just a wire basket. We filled it up with our germination mix. Two potatoes inside there. Our worst was 690 grams. Not bad. Our best was 1.2 kilos. Okay. We left a space, so if you go and watch the video, you can actually see there's a space between, um, I think it was between the, the buckets and the bags, where we left a space for a straw bale root start method. Um, and we just couldn't find straw bales this year. It was just crazy. We couldn't find straw bales. But I've done the root start method before, and the root start method is probably, um, of all of these methods, it's probably the best, but it's still not as good as soil. The good thing with Ruth Stout is that you harvest clean potatoes. You just, move the, you just move the straw away and you pull these clean potatoes out. No need to wash them, which is fantastic. With the soil, we planted two of these potatoes. The worst was 2.5 kilos. 120 grams planted, 2.5 kilos harvested. Our best was 4.7 kilos. Okay, that is between a three and a five times harvest of the best of the other varieties. And this goes across all five varieties. We did this on five varieties. We ran five trials side by side. Okay, and it's a case of plant your potatoes in soil. If you haven't got the space, if you haven't got the space to, um, to plant them in soil, um, then I would look at planting them in baskets that's probably the uh, uh, the next best solution but guys go and look at the YouTube video it's it's actually very interesting it's very instructional um, and it's nice to be able to share this information because everybody goes oh, plant it in bags plant it in buckets plant it in tires everyone knows the best and those of you that have tried know this it doesn't work cool my potatoes don't do bad in my Buckets that I use those big containers. Okay. How big is the bucket? It's 100 liters. There's your answer. Okay, we use 20 liter buckets. Why do you say the, the, the answer is because I use those 100 liter buckets? The 100 liter buckets, you've got the soil volume. Yes. Okay, so m m my understanding as to why, why the potatoes do better in soil than any of the other varieties is that the potatoes have access to the nutrients inside the soil. And the thing is, we didn't plant the potatoes in improved soil. We actually, it was felt grass, we removed the felt grass, made the beds, planted the potatoes. So it was literally virgin soil. Cool. And you can go and see at the bottom of the show garden next to the ducks, you can see it's a whole bed now of Tyson potatoes. And we planted the Tyson potatoes so that we've got... Um, potatoes for winter and our, our show garden feeds our staff and we do about 30 families off our show garden okay cool so how to plant the potatoes this is the question how do we plant the potatoes so the first thing is you're looking for seed potatoes we recommend between 60 and 80 grams um, when we buy our seed potatoes they come in a big 25 kilo bag and they sold what's called by the count so we will try and buy like 
four, 400, 450 count potatoes, which will give us 60-odd um, gram potatoes, which is really cool. Sometimes we can only get 120 count potatoes. So instead of sending you uh, a whole thing of, of, uh, of little potatoes, we send you two big potatoes and you go, these are not seed potatoes. Hey? These are potato potatoes. But it's, it's what's available at the time. So if you get a, a large seed potato, cut it down to between um, 60 and 90 grams. The cut surface is going to be your biggest disease problem. So there's three ways to cure that cut surface. The first way, stick it in the sun, let it get a little bit of a scab over it. It'll take a day or two and then you can plant it. The second way is you take the, you cut the potato, you take the potato, you dip the end in sulfur. Just normal sulfur you buy at the co-op. Sulfur is good for your soil. It helps to drop the pH inside your soil and um, your plants need sulfur. So it's not something, it's not a, it is a chemical, but it's not a, it's not a bad chemical. Let's put it that way. Okay. And the third way is what most commercial farmers do is they cut the seed potato and they stick the wet part into a bag of cement. Okay. So when they're harvesting their potatoes, you see these little round discs, which is like an imprint of the potato that's now come off once the potato's grown. So those are the three ways that you can cure a cut surface. There's another way. Tell me. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yes, yes I've, heard, I've heard of cinnamon before, but that's probably the most expensive way. No, but I mean, if it's just, you know... If, you're if it's just a couple of potatoes, yeah. If, you, if you're growing at home, you don't have a farm, but you just have a garden that you can grow, it's not expensive. Yeah. So you can dip it in cinnamon as well. A, a, a cinnamon is a very good antifungal, anti antibacterial um, has very good antifungal and antibacterial properties. Cool. The next thing is you need to fertilize your potatoes. There's only one fertilizer that you need. Talborn Organics 232. Okay. Over the growing season, you need to put down about 200 grams per running meter of, um, of fertilizer per plant. So you can either put 200 grams at planting what I prefer to do is we put 100 grams at planting and then we do a second dose of fertilizer when the flowers start. Okay, and I'll talk now about when the flowers start. Okay, so there are a couple, there are three things. It's always, you know, the garlic, there are three things. Potatoes, there are three things. There are three things that potatoes require. They don't like competition with weeds. Exactly like garlic. The potatoes don't have an extensive root system. They can't fight off the weeds. The cool thing is, if you're planting your potatoes in a row, as soon as the canopies touch, they actually shade out the weeds themselves. So you only need to weed until the canopies touch. Okay. Um, watering is probably um, one of the biggest factors that will reduce your, um, your yield of potatoes. And especially once the flowers start, because that is bulb initiation and what's called bulking with potatoes. Potatoes go through a couple of phases. When the, when the flowering starts, that is bulb initiation. And from bulb initiation, it goes to bulking, which is when the potatoes actually start to swell. And if there's water stress there, you are not going to get big potatoes. Hilling potatoes. Oh, let's talk about determinate and indeterminate. Okay. Do you get indeterminate tomato, uh, potatoes? Anywhere in the world. So everybody says um, you can get, in, well not everybody, a lot of people say you get indeterminate potatoes. So that's a potato that produces potatoes all the way up the stem. Okay? They don't exist. It does not exist. And the reason why people think that you get determinate and indeterminate potatoes is because they're kissing cousins with tomatoes. And with tomatoes, you get determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. If you grow potatoes, it doesn't matter how high you heal the potato up, all the potatoes will be at the bottom. They will all be at the bottom. And I've seen pictures, especially on our Facebook group, where you see someone is growing his potato and his tire stack is this high. And his potatoes plant is out at the top. And I say to them, when you harvest, please tell us what you harvested. 
Don't say a word. If it was a great harvest, the guy would come back and say, check my potato harvest. Because everybody likes to show off. And we like it when people show off. But with potatoes, you don't get indeterminate. They just don't exist. All potatoes are determinate. All potatoes will produce their, their fruit. If you have a, a stack of tires, three tires high, all the potatoes will be in the bottom tire. Always. Okay. So, why do we heal potatoes? Why do we heal up potatoes? My grandfather did it. Your grandfather did it. That's a very good reason. So, why do we heal potatoes? To keep the soil temperature. To keep the soil temperature good? Because of the light. Ma'am, at the back? To keep the potatoes, to protect the potatoes, absolutely correct. And to support the plant. Okay? Potato plant is a very fragile plant. If it gets blown about by the wind, what's going to happen is it's going to snap. If the, if the plant snaps, your potato harvest is done. Okay? And that's the only reason. Healing potatoes does not increase your yield. Healing potatoes protects the potatoes from going green. It supports the plants. And it keeps the, it keeps the roots cool. Done. Finished. Claw. That's the only reason why you heal potatoes. You can heal it up as high as you want. Your potatoes are at the bottom. So when do you harvest potatoes? Well, Come, guys. Well, it depends on the variety, but normally from October onwards. It depends on the variety. Well done. Depends on the variety, but normally from October onwards. It depends when you plant. So this year, we managed to supply five varieties of potatoes. The earliest variety that we, were, uh, that we supplied was a variety called El Mundo, 55 days. That's less than two months. How awesome is that? Those of you that left your El Mundos in the ground too long, they started sprouting. Am I right? Who left your El Mundos in the ground too long? Hey, did you guys? Did they start sprouting? Yeah? Okay, because you couldn't believe 55 days. It's too quick, hey? This guy must be smoking his breakfast. No potato takes 55 days. Eh? So we had El Mundo at 55 days to harvest, which is fantastic. And then we had staggered harvests all the way out to 120 days. That means that you could buy our potato sampler pack, plant the potatoes. In less than two months, you're eating potatoes out of your garden. And for the next four months, you're eating potatoes out of your garden. We are still eating potatoes now. That we planted in spring. Absolutely fantastic. We haven't bought potatoes. It's like mm, lacquer. Okay, so there's a couple of indicators. Flowering does not indicate time to, to harvest. Flowering indicates tuber initiation and bulking. So there's two ways to do it. You can either go onto our website and see the variety that we've supplied you and work out on the calendar, min of meer naast en bij, plus minus ongeveer, when you should be harvesting. Okay, or what you do is you sneak your hand into the soil and you find a potato and you pull the potato out. Okay, and you do what's called the slip test. And you take your thumb, you put it on the potato and you push. And if the skin slips off, it's not ready to harvest. If the skin slips off, they make baby potatoes. So in South Africa, we eat these little potatoes, these little poiki potatoes. We call them baby potatoes. Am I right? Yeah. You try and sell that to somebody in the UK as a baby potato, they'll throw it back at you. Because <laughs> that's not a baby potato. Those are small mature potatoes. When you harvest your potatoes, you harvest nice big ones and a whole lot of small ones. They don't want to hoi the small ones away, so they put them in the bag and they say, these are baby potatoes for your poiki. <laughs> okay. But real baby potatoes are potatoes that are almost mature, but the skin slips off. So you take those potatoes, you boil them up, hoi butter and, and, and garlic onto those potatoes, and it'll be a transcendental experience. <laughs> that is how nice they are. Okay? But you can only do it with real baby potatoes. You can't do it with baby potatoes that you hoi butter and garlic on and say, hey, I've got baby potatoes. It's... A, it's, it's they two different things. And the South African consumer is stupid. Like Vrachtag, we are stupid. As consumers, we are stupid. Because we don't know what we don't know. Okay. So, 
we always try and give a spread of, of potatoes. Right now, we bought these seed potatoes in November. We were told that there's a seed potato shortage. And the only seed potatoes we could get was Tyson. The cool thing is Tyson gives you the highest yield in our experience. And a lot of people have come and told me how, how absolutely impressed they are with Tyson. So we only have Tyson potatoes available. But we will have a, a variety again in spring. When you're harvesting your potatoes, you do the slip test. If the skin stays on, they're ready to harvest. If you harvest potatoes and they are too early, they are not going to store. And there's a way to get around that, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you now. So the first thing is you, you eat the damaged potatoes first. When you harvest the potatoes, that night you eat all the damaged potatoes. The next night, whatever other potatoes that you damaged, and you kick the, the person in the bum that put the fork through the potatoes. Yes? Mm-hmm. I see. So how do we store them? And I think this is the biggest thing is that, especially when people harvest a lot of potatoes, and, and um, it's now a case of, <clears throat> if I don't store these potatoes correctly, I'm going to lose them. Okay? And nobody wants to lose a season's worth of effort. It's just, it's, it's just not worth it. You, you actually want to use those potatoes for as long as possible. There's four enemies of potatoes. Light, moisture, heat, and lack of ventilation. Those are the four enemies. So, store the potato in the dark. Okay. Make sure that there's no moisture. Because the moisture will rot the potatoes. Make sure that it's stored in a cool place with a stable temperature. I only know of one person with a root cellar. I'm very jealous of his root cellar. Okay? I only know of one person with a root cellar. He, he, he is here at the moment. <laughs> but he's got a really nice root cellar. And it's, it's probably it's the most stable environment to store potatoes in. Okay? Otherwise, make sure that you've got a pantry on the south side of your house that, that, that remains quite cool. One of the things that we learned with our pantry, we've got two chest freezers in our pantry. And the chest freezers spike the temperature in our pantry, which is a problem. Okay, so don't put a fridge or a freezer inside your pantry. This is the ideal way to store potatoes, is a wooden crate like this. Okay, and lack of ventilation. So what you do is you put a layer of basically anything that will absorb moisture. You can put shredding in here, you can put straw inside here, you can put shavings inside here, put a layer of potatoes. Put another layer of, of material, layer of potatoes. Leather, okay, and you fill it up and you put this in your pantry. The absolute worst thing that you can store potatoes in, there's two things, absolute worst thing you can store potatoes in. Plastic bag and an old brown potato bag. So those of you that are older will remember on the potato bags they used to be, may not be reused. Discard after use. Discard after first use may not be reused. There's actually a law that says you may not use reuse potato bags. I haven't seen it on potato bags for, for a long time. I saw it the other day. I went to check. Did you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Please take a photograph for me and, send it, and we can put it up on, on Facebook. Okay, you may not reuse the potato bags. And there's a reason for that. Because they know that there are diseased potatoes sold from the farms to the market that gets fed to you guys. And if you take your clean potatoes and store them in a brown paper bag, and you take those potatoes and plant them inside your soil, you're transmitting whatever disease, whether it's a virus or a spore or something like that, into your soil. How's that for a lesson? Hey? Cool. So, hessian sacks, wooden crates. Um, you can store them, if, you, if you've got the space, <clears throat> put down a, a layer of straw, put your potatoes on the straw, put a layer of straw over the potatoes. I know very few people with that amount of space. Okay. The air must be able to pass through. And the cool thing is, if you use a hessian sack, or if you use a crate like this, you can actually walk past your sack, and you can smell them. Because everybody knows what a fraught potato smells like, eh? Hey? Okay, and the minute that you smell it, 
take that crate out and use those potatoes first. Okay. So what happens if you harvest your potatoes too early and they're not storing? How do you store the potatoes? How do you, how do you, how do you salvage that crop from going off? You can freeze them or you can dehydrate them. If you freeze them, they need to be pre-cooked. Typically, frozen potatoes are stored as chips. Okay. Um, or probably wedges. You know, the, uh, my weakness, Nando's wedges with lots of uh, Nando's sauce. This is my weakness. Um, the next way, so it needs to be pre-cooked. You can't, you can't freeze raw potatoes. Okay. The next way is to dehydrate them. And dehydration is probably the smartest way to, um, to store your potatoes for a long term. Because you can take it, you can dehydrate the potatoes, vacuum seal it, not just Ziploc bag, proper vacuum seal. It'll be shelf stable for about two years, which is fantastic. But then you have smash. Okay. So there's three ways to dehydrate potatoes. You can dehydrate them raw, pre-cooked. Or partially cooked and cooked. Who's, who's the raw guys for dehydrated potatoes? Anybody? Who's the partially cooked guys for dehydrated potatoes? Anybody? Does everybody say cooked potatoes is the best way to dehydrate potatoes? No. I haven't Nobody's dehydrated potatoes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> partially cooked is the best way and I don't know why. Okay, so they can be dehydrated all three ways. It doesn't matter. But you get the best texture and the best results with a partially cooked potato. It's partially boiled and then dehydrated. If somebody knows, they can answer in the, in the comments of the video. But then you can, vacu you can vacuum seal it all three ways. You can vacuum seal it and it's shelf stable for one to two years. If you have massive temperature fluctuations, just use it faster. Cool. Excellent, guys. And we are on track. Let's talk about diseases. So, I gave you the whole scary speech about using shop-bought potatoes and destroying your soil and all of those things. And you know what? It's a case of... Uh, I'm not trying to scare you to only buying seed potatoes. But I am trying to scare you to only buy seed potatoes, okay? I don't want to scare you. So I'm going to try and explain my logic over here, okay? Um, I want what, what's best for you. I really, if you know living seeds, you know how we operate. We want what's best for you, okay? And if you plant store-bought potatoes, go for it. If you, if, if you don't, if you... If you don't want to buy seed potatoes, that's 100% fine. Um, those of you that buy, that buy certified seed potatoes from us, you can take those potatoes and as long as you have no soil-borne diseases on your potato plants, you can reuse those potatoes for the next planting. I, I absolutely don't see any reason why not. And you can probably do it a third time. But the fourth time you're going to have a problem, especially with your own saved potatoes. Okay, um, it's, there's a very high chance of actually picking up a disease. The way that we operate over here, um, we are trying to limit the amount of disease that we have. Okay, and normally what happens, people go, oh, my plants just died. You know, I don't know why they died, but they just died. And it's, it's, it's generally a disease. So potatoes have a couple of diseases. The most common diseases are early blight and late blight. If your potato plant gets blight before the flowers come out, it's early blight. If your potato plants get blight after the flowers come out, it's either early blight or it's late blight. Okay, you can see on the potato if the potato's got blight. And normally what happens is heavily blighted potatoes don't get sold on the market because the potatoes look, they don't look lacquer. Okay, so people don't buy them. Um... And those potatoes are generally processed into some kind of, of, of animal feed. Um, viruses, I've done this 
we've left some virus plants. We don't have virus potato plants, fortunately, um, but we've got some virus pumpkin plants, and I want to show you what a virus leaf looks like. So not all viruses present exactly the same, okay? But what happens is if you look, if you look at the leaves, you'll get a mottling, it'll be a mosaic type virus um, on the leaf. And that leaf is, or, or that leaf, that virus is seed borne or it's plant material borne. Not all viruses, so the virus that I'm going to show you now is either a pumpkin or a cucumber or a watermelon mosaic virus. It's very difficult to identify. Thank you very much. It's very difficult to identify. So it looks like a normal leaf, am I right? There we go. Okay. So this is what a virus leaf looks like. And this is one, just please pass it around. That's one type of virus. That virus will not affect potatoes. Generally, the viruses are species specific or family specific. But you'll look at your leaf and you'll, say, you'll see something's not right over here. And when you know something's not right, that is a virus. Now, what happens is who's planted potatoes inside their soil, harvested their potatoes, and the next year, here comes a potato plant growing by itself. Okay, that plant needs to die. Done. Pull the plant out, kill the plant. Because if that plant has got it, if, if you had a disease the previous year, that plant is going to start the disease in your whole garden for the season. Volunteer growth. Everybody is excited about volunteer growth. And there are certain varieties. Volunteer growth is fantastic. We encourage volunteer growth, or we used to encourage volunteer growth in, in our personal vegetable garden when we had a personal vegetable garden, where we would take um, certain tomatoes and just squeeze a tomato into the soil. Next year it comes up by itself. Lettuce, let a lettuce plant flower, mess some seed on the ground, the lettuce comes up next year without any effort. There are certain things that volunteer growth is highly discouraged. And potatoes, volunteer potatoes, kill them. Like, just kill them. Cool. Can you put them on compost? Um, I, I, I wouldn't, eh? I wouldn't. I'd, I'd put them into the bin, take it off, send it to the dump. Okay, I wouldn't put them onto the compost. Um, especially if... if if that plant is able to grow in your compost. The viruses, generally the viruses need live plant material to survive. Okay, so it needs to be a tuber, it needs to be a seed, something along those lines. Um, but I, I wouldn't risk it. Viruses, we, we are highly vigilant for viruses. Highly vigilant. Christine. Question on the compost. Um, if you bought shop potatoes and you peeled them, should you put those peels? We throw them away. We don't give them to pigs. So we've got pigs. We don't give shop-bought potatoes to our pigs. Um, if we, if, even our potatoes, if we harvest... Now, our potatoes, our potatoes were clean. Okay? Even our peels of our potatoes, they organically grown on Living Seeds Farm. We throw the peels away. They don't go into our compost. They don't go to our pigs. Like, not interested. Okay? But we are very... We are very vigilant and very uh, aware of, of viruses on our property, um, mainly because many of the viruses are seed-borne and seed-transmitted. So what happens is if I sell you a seed that, is, that has a virus in it, you will get a virus in your garden from my seed. Okay, And we don't do that. We, we threw away two tons of pumpkin this year. Easy two tons. We threw away two tons of mature pumpkin. Because we suspected some of it had virus, some of it we suspected had virus. Two tons of potatoes, that's a lot of seed, eh? Pumpkin. Hey? Pumpkin. pumpkin, sorry. Two tons of pumpkin, it's a lot of seed that we threw away. And we threw it away because we su suspected um, virus. Some of it we knew and some of it we suspected. That is how serious we take it. Cool. The next thing is aphids. Aphids are normally quite a huge issue with, um, with potatoes, especially growing potatoes in soil that are lacking nutrients. So if you have an aphid problem, you have an imbalance inside your soil. 
Very often, it's because people have thrown a high nitrogen fertilizer at their potatoes, so like Vita Green or something like that. And what that does is it stimulates what I call a diabetic plant. Aphids love diabetic plants. Okay. Um, and to fix aphids, it's, it's very easy. Um, it's, it's, it's Powell and Nudisan, or you can release wasps. The next talk we'll be talking about a whole variety of, of, of pest control solutions. The next two I'm going to talk about is, is corky scab and common scab. Now, all of you have seen potatoes with scab. It's not a disease. It's actually an, in, it's a, it's actually an environmental condition. So if you look at a potato and you see these like little brown scabs on the surface of the potato, that is common scab. And common scab is caused because your soil pH is too high. Okay, the other one is corky scab, which it looks like a scab that's got cracks in it. I'm sure you guys have seen it. That's corky scab, and that scab is caused by a soil pH that is too low. Okay, and it's pretty easy to correct if you've got a high soil pH, uh, and you and you want to um, and you want to bring the pH down. You put sulfur in your soil or coffee grounds. So just normal agricultural sulfur. You can go and buy sulfur at the co-op. You put sulfur down. And if you put gypsum down um, for for calcium, gypsum has got a, a, a an available calcium. Um, cation or uh, an available calcium ion um, that your that your soil can use it's instantly available actually um, and if you want to increase your soil pH wood ash <coughs> not charcoal ash wood ash so if you've got a wood burning fire take the wood ash from your wood burning fire put it into your garden and you'll increase the soil pH <coughs> if you want to know what your soil pH is we sell soil tests inside the, inside the shop. You can buy a soil test. I think it's about 500 Rand for a soil test. You take a soil sample. There's a video on YouTube on how to take the soil sample. You send it off to our lab. We have a soil scientist, and he will analyze your soil and tell you what corrective actions you can take using organic methods, not using chemical methods. So it's a standard. It's, a, it's called a Milich 3 test. So it's a standard soil test, but then he gives you organic amendments to correct your soil. Excellent, guys. That is my talk done. Ah, thank you. Less than an hour. Do we have any questions? Um, just hold up the bag again, please. You look beautiful. So. It's Talbourne White. Talbourne Organics Vita Grow. It's the 232. Talbourne Yellow. Christine. Um, the humidity lately has been a lot higher than you usually have. Mm. How does that influence storing potatoes? So, it's trying to get it away from moisture is one thing, but the humidity is making Yeah, so the humidity, we don't have a humidity problem over here. So you must be getting a lot more rain than we are. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> um, you, you can get dehumidifiers. You put a dehumidifier inside your, um, inside your pantry. That would probably be the easiest way to do it. Okay. So the sawdust will, will, will absorb moisture, but it has, a, it, it has a level where it can't absorb anymore, and now the sawdust is becoming the problem. Okay, so a dehumidifier will go a long way to do that. Or what you can do is you can go to your local music store, and they have big silica gel packets like this, like a whole big ones. Take the silica gel packet, put it in your, in your oven on low for a couple of hours. You'll see the color will change. So it'll, it'll either be blue or pink, and I can't remember, but I think, the, I think pink is moisture and blue is dry. Other way around. Blue is, mo blue is moisture and pink is dry. Is that right? Dennis? Yes. Yeah, so if it's pink, then um, it's dry, and when it turns blue, it's absorbed all of the moisture. You put it into your oven, you drive all the moisture off, it goes pink again, and then you put it with your potatoes, and that'll absorb the moisture. Sir? Yeah, you commented on reusing the paper bag, the data bag, but wouldn't that apply to that wooden crate as well? Um, it, probably would it probably would apply to the, the crate, but we're growing clean potatoes. 
We're not growing commercial potatoes. But yes, it probably would apply. If you have diseased potatoes, you need to take precautions. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you don't have like the fertilizer, what other options do we have? Okay, so um, compost will help. We had a discussion about this yesterday, and a lot of there's a movement. There's there's currently a movement on social media, where where you have people going. I don't use any fertilizer on my vegetable garden. Okay, I'm a hundred percent organic, and I don't use fertilizer on my garden. And the thing is, you need to earn the right not to use fertilizer. Okay, not using fertilizer is um, we call it organic by neglect. Okay, because you are neglecting your plants. Your plants need food. Our soils have been destroyed over the years. Your your, your, your plants need food. So what you can do is you can go to the store and ask them for a sample of our fertilizers and run a trial. So plant your crop with your compost, plant your crop with compost and fertilizer, and plant your crop with fertilizer only. The best one will be compost and fertilizer. Okay, we have, over the last couple of years, we have reduced our fertilizer applications on our soil. So when I say to you, put 100 grams down, we are now putting 50 grams down. Okay, but I've earned the right to do that. Okay, I've literally, I've earned the right to use less fertilizer. And it's something that it frustrates me because you see these people and they're like mediocre gardeners. Okay, and you look at their plants and you can see the plants are deficient. You look at their harvests and you can see that they're not getting the abundance that they should be getting. And the cost that you spend, I don't know what this costs. I really don't know what this costs. Does anybody know what a two kilo vitagro costs? About 70 odd rand. 70 odd rand. So this is 70 bucks, okay? 70 bucks and this two kilos will do 20 meters of, of, of potatoes. How much is a pocket of potatoes? 140. What? No, one foot yet. No ways. Actually, 165 lost. <laughs> yeah. This mole. Okay. So, if you, if you buy a, a, um, a two and a half kilogram box of potatoes like this, and you buy a two kilo bag of this, it's going to cost you maybe 300 bucks. Okay you are probably going to harvest in the order of two, three hundred kilos of potatoes. Yes. Is the 70 rand worth it? Uh, li literally. So everybody can go, if you don't want to use fertilizers, go to the store, ask for fertilizer samples. They'll give you one of each. Oh, at the demo stand. There's fertilizer samples at the demo stand. Please take one of each. There's different kinds of fertilizer. Yes, ma'am. When is that we can plant potatoes for now. So you've probably got another two weeks um, in the vol, you've probably got another two weeks to plant potatoes. Okay, um, the further north that you go, um, your, your potato planting season, you can, you can probably plant, if, you, if you're in Pretoria, um, you can probably plant potatoes by the end of next month. If you're Hammond's Kral, you know, it's like, the warmer it gets, yeah. So, you want, you want about 90 days between planting and, and last frost. And you must remember, even if your plants get frost right at the last, it's not a crisis because the, the, what you're harvesting is underground. Talking about harvesting underground, the nice thing with potatoes, this is planting potatoes now is what's called main crop potatoes. So you have early crop potatoes, which is planting in spring. This is now main crop potatoes. In... Um, in, in in the summer rainfall area, our rain stops March, maybe early April. These potatoes are ready to harvest at the end of April. But if there's no rain, you can leave them inside the soil. There's no need to harvest them. There's no need to store them. Every time you need potatoes, you just go and lift them out of the ground. How awesome is that? If you have rain, though, lift your potatoes because they will rot. Okay? The guys in the Cape, completely different story. They have winter rainfall, okay? They can't keep their potatoes in the ground over winter. Excellent.
Yes, sir. Min of meer, plus minus, naast en by ongeveer this size. Okay, so with, with seed potatoes, if you plant very small seed potatoes, you're going to get small potatoes. If you plant large seed potatoes like this, you're going to get large potatoes. Your weight is not really going to change. But the size of your potatoes is going to change. If you plant 60 to 80 gram, 90 gram, 100 gram potatoes, absolutely perfect. You'll get nice big, nice big potatoes and then a whole lot of little smaller ones. The smaller ones, poiky potatoes. Cool. Sorry? What's the best way to keep them from next season? Like that. Just like this, yeah. As cool as possible. Joshua. Why not use bone boss for 410 for potatoes? Nitrogen for phosphates, 10 for roots. Why not that one? Because we want a balanced fertilizer for the roots. We've never, I've never grown potatoes with a, um, with a bone foss, yeah. Why, what's your thinking? So, I've, I've, I came across the tip and trialed it on Facebook for carrots. Yes. Absolutely phenomenal, the best carrots I've ever tasted until I came here. Um, but the potatoes that I have grown, I've grown this way and had good success. So we can run a trial, Josh. We we can run a trial next year. Let's let's do a line of one and do a line of the other. My understanding of the NPK is that the middle number feeds the roots. Yes. So to me, just very layman, it seems that the bone boss would. I think it might be a little bit on the high side. Okay. Um, and if you look at all of the commercial farmers, okay, all of the commercial farmers suggest two, three, two. It's not a. It's a. It's and. We haven't done the exercise to do what they've what they've learned over the years. We just haven't. But we can run it next year. Okay, put it into the trial for next year. Cool. And just while I'm talking, the cost of the Vata Grow 232 at the moment is 91 some change. And the Tyson 2.5 is 196.90. So it was almost exactly 300 rand. 300 bucks, yeah. I was thumb sucking, but it's, it's close. <laughs> Okay, but you, but you are going to get, sorry, so I'll be with you now. You are going to get, if you, if you look after them correctly and you, and you water them correctly and you fertilize them correctly, you're going to need two bags of these for one of these boxes. Okay, but one box is going to give you 200 kilos of potatoes. It's two and a half kilos. It's a hundred times increase. That have been treated with, 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 that have been treated with,